What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another quadratic relations word problem dealing with bridges. This is the second word problem that we're going over when dealing with bridges. Hopefully you're watching this on the website and watching the videos in order because there's gonna be lots of carryover from that previous scenario to this one. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the course website. There's a link in the description box. So in this particular question, we're told that a bridge's height in meters can be modeled by h equals negative 1 over 32x squared plus 5 over 2x, where x is the horizontal distance from one end of the bridge. How tall and wide is the bridge? So exact same question as the previous one. It's just the quadratic we're given, it's in a different format, notice. So in the previous video, I mentioned that you can get this kind of question, this bridge kind of question in the format y equals ax squared plus c, or actually let's just put h here instead of y, right? That's what we were dealing with before. But notice that in this case, the format here is going to be h equals ax squared plus bx, right? Notice that there's no c value over here versus in that previous scenario, there was no bx value, it was just a c. And there's quite a few differences here with this kind of quadratic as we went over. Basically, we mentioned how the vertex of this kind of quadratic, it's always gonna be at an x value of zero, that's always gonna be the axis of symmetry, and the y value of the vertex is gonna be the c value. So in this case, the bridge was up here, and then the quadratic looked like that. Now, just in general, one thing I wanna mention, if you're just looking at an abstract quadratic like this, the vertex is still at zero and C, but it can take many different shapes, right? It, could, it can uh, be up here and then um, open up, right? If this A value is positive, maybe it could be down here, it could open up, it could open down, down there, it could open down over here, right? Different kind of shapes that this quadratic in general can take AX squared plus C, but the vertex is always going to be at zero and C. Basically, the y-intercept of this kind of quadratic is always going to be the vertex, right? But when you're dealing with a bridge, it's usually going to be an upside down parabola like this. Now, one thing I want to mention is the difference between that last question and this question in terms of the x variable. Notice that in that previous question, the x variable represented the horizontal distance from the center of the bridge, right? This is the center of the bridge. And x was the horizontal distance from that center. Well, in this case, the way that this quadratic is going to look is it's actually going to look like this where at that y-axis it's going to be the end of the bridge versus the center of the bridge so notice that x in this case is the horizontal distance from one end of the bridge right so if you compare the wording with the previous one the wording of the x variable the way it's described it's different in the previous one x was the horizontal distance from the center here x is the horizontal distance from one end of the bridge okay so just be on the lookout for the differences in these kinds of questions and maybe not just bridge questions but any kind of word problems the quadratics can be given with uh with different shapes now a quadratic that's in this format right over here in this particular case this quadratic it's going to look like this but i just want to kind of give you an overview of how a quadratic in this format without a c value can look in general now a quadratic like this in this format it's always going to have a point at the origin right because if you think about it, if you plug in zero for the x's no matter what the a and the b is the y value is going to be zero so this quadratic it's always going to contain the point zero and zero that's not going to be the vertex but it's going to contain that point Okay, and then depending on what the A and B is, like if the A is positive, then it's going to be opening up, right? So you can have quadratics like this or like this. Maybe you can have the A negative so they could open down. They could look like this or like this, right? You can have different looking quadratics, 
but they're all going to go through that origin if they're in this kind of format. Okay, but this one in particular, it's going to look like this. We're going to make a table of values to show it looks like this, but just wanted to mention the difference between those two formats just so when you see them, you kind of know in your mind already what you're getting yourself into, right? The different format between AX squared plus BX and that other quadratic AX squared plus C. So let's get to this question here and let's create a table of values so we can make a more accurate graph over here with actual points and then we can tell how tall and wide the, um, the bridge is going to be. So I'm going to make a table over here. Now the challenge with these questions sometimes is knowing what x values to go up by and sometimes that takes a little bit of uh, trial and error. So we know that we're going to start at an x value of zero, right? And we know that the h value is going to be zero. As we mentioned, if it's in this format, right, there's going to be a point over here. Now the question is, what values do we go up by over here in the table of values, just so we're not spending too much time over here? And we want to try to get to a point, the end point, where that h value again is going to be zero, right? And you'll notice that with this particular function, if you try to go up by like ones, for example, so if you go up by one, two, what you'll notice is that the height differences are going to be very small, right? So I wouldn't recommend going up by, um, by ones because you're going to have a very large table. But again, sometimes it takes a little trial and error to know what to go up by. Right, but what I'm actually going to go up by in this case is I'm going to go up by 10. So let's start off with an x value of 10. So let's actually just draw another. Um, actually, you know what? Let's work with the table first. Let's make the table and then we'll draw whatever points we get here. So an x value of 10. Just be careful with your uh, algebra over here. So we plug in an x value of 10 for x, right? So this is going to be squared and then we'll have 5 over 2 times 10. So we'd end up with negative 1 over 32 times 100 plus 5 over 2, that's just 2.5 times 10 would give us 25. And when you end up doing the algebra here, so this times that, I'm just going to keep all of this in decimals, we'd end up with negative 3.125 plus 25 we'd end up with 21.875. So at a horizontal distance of 10 meters from the end of the bridge, the height is going to be 21.875 meters. Okay, and just to show you on a drawing how that looks like. So we know we got 0 and 0. That's over here. Now, remember, this is x, this is h over here. And then the bridge is going to look something like this. And so what this means here is that at a horizontal distance of 10, so this is the horizontal distance, so let's say 10 is like over here. At that horizontal distance from this end of the bridge, the height, right, this is maybe not to scale, this maybe should be a little closer, but I'm just kind of just showing you um, what's happening here. So. At a horizontal distance of 10, right, from the uh, end of the bridge, right, this is 10, the height at that point here is going to be 21.875, right? So that's what that means. That's what this table in this particular situation means. And when you fill out the rest of the table, these are the values that you would get. So for example, at a horizontal distance of 20, height would be 37.5. At a horizontal distance of 30, height would be 46.875, etc, etc. And then you want to get your table to the point where that h value, that height is zero. Right? That's the most important point. So this is a fairly large table. We could have maybe even went up by 20s. I decided to go up by 10s. We actually don't need all this detail. The most important point to get is this one. It's that other intercept that you want to get. And so let me just erase all this, draw another one. Because once you have that, you can actually 
uh, figure out how tall the bridge is too. Let me explain why. So we know zero and zero is gonna be there and then we got 80 and zero. So that other end of the bridge is happening at 80 right there. Now, because we have an intercept at zero and 80, remember the vertex or the axis of symmetry of a quadratic, of any quadratic, it's always gonna be the midpoint of the two x-intercepts, right? If it contains x-intercepts, there's some quadratics that don't contain them. In this case, there are two x-intercepts. And so the axis of symmetry, if we draw it, it's gonna be the midpoint between these. How do you find the midpoint between two numbers? You could just add them, divided by two. So zero plus 80 is 80, divided by two gives us 40. Okay, so at that horizontal distance of 40 from either this end or this end, notice that both of these are 40, that's where the vertex happens, right? So you can always get this value once you have the two intercepts. That's why I was saying, really, you just need the zero and zero and the 80 and zero. All this other stuff, uh, it's good. Maybe your teacher wants you to show detail, okay? But really, the to answer this particular question, at least, all you need is um, is the two intercepts because the difference between the two intercepts is how wide the bridge is gonna be, right? It's gonna be 80 meters. So how wide is it? Well, it's 80 meters. That's one of the answers. And then how tall is it? Well, we just need the height at that horizontal distance of 40 because that's the axis, right? That's the highest point of the quadratic. And so at 40, that height is 50. So we got 40 and 50, that's this point over here. So how tall is the bridge? It's 50 meters. Okay, so if you get maybe a question like this, it's like a multiple choice, you wanna go through it quickly, and the quadratic is in this kind of format, that ax squared plus bx format, you could just start plugging in values until you get to this value over here. And then once you have it, you can figure out the rest pretty quickly Right? This vertex is gonna happen at the midpoint of the intercepts, in this case it's 40, and then if you want that value, just take the 40, plug it in here to get your 50. You don't necessarily have to write out a table of values, but if you're just starting these kinds of questions, then I recommend writing out the table of values just so you get used to and more comfortable with how all of this, um, with how this works, right? But anyway, so that's another scenario, another bridge question that can be in a different format. So just be on the lookout for those two different formats of AX squared plus C versus AX squared plus BX.